Day one of craft mist with Amy Makes That. Let's make an ugly sweater design. If you hate weeding, this method is for you. Today, I'm using a DTF transfer to heat press onto my long sleeve tee. DTF transfers are easy to order and apply. All you have to do is preheat your apparel item for 20 seconds at 329 degrees to remove wrinkles and moisture. Then measure your design with the must-have t-shirt ruler guide tool. Add heat resistant tape to secure your measurements. Then you can heat press with firm pressure for 20 seconds at 329 degrees. I use a Teflon sheet for extra protection. Allow the DTF transfer to completely cool before removing the carrier sheet. Remove it carefully, then heat press again for another 20 seconds at 329 degrees without a Teflon sheet this time. Remove the carrier film to reveal your new cozy craft miss ugly sweater. Have you tried DTF transfers before? Be sure to check out my blog for more information on 25 days of craft miss and follow me to see day two. It's day two of Craft Mist with Amy Makes That and we're turning a handwritten recipe into a mini cutting board ornament. How cute. First, get your cutting board PNG. I found this one from Canva and saved it with a transparent background. Then upload the cutting board and recipe to the Glowforge app. The Aura can also take a photo of your recipe if you place it inside, but I no longer have the physical copy of my grandma's recipe, so we're working with just the photocopy. Place the wood inside the Glowforge Aura and let it do its magic. This project took about 14 minutes because of the engraving and double cut, but honestly, I could could have sat here all day waiting to see my grandma's handwriting again. Don't forget to remove the masking on both sides. I use my weeder tool for extra help. Then add ribbon to hang on your tree. What a beautiful in memory gift to honor your loved ones that have passed. And yes, this is your sign to get the Glowforge Aura this holiday season. Come back tomorrow to see day three of Craftmas. I found these jars at Target, so let's decorate them with my Cricut for Craftmas day three. I drew the candy canes myself last year for a tutorial and uploaded them into Cricut Design Space. Today, we're using my new Cricut Joy Extra and permanent adhesive vinyl. The Cricut will cut the vinyl and then weed both the red and white vinyl. Since there are two layers, I'm first picking up the red layer with transfer tape and then applying it to the white layer. By the way, let me know in the comments if you want to learn a very easy layering hack that I learned. Now you can apply the candy canes onto the jar. I ended up not doing a wrap because you'll actually be learning that in day 12's project. And this cup cradle is the best tool to have for applying vinyl to any curved surface. Now your jar is ready to be filled with delicious candy for this holiday season. And yes, candy does taste better in a decorated jar. While Amy makes that to see day four of Craft Mist tomorrow. If you have a Stanley cup or are gifting someone a Stanley for the holidays, try making a personalized name tag. It's day four of Craft Mist and we're using both my Glowforge Aura and Cricut for today's project. The Aura will cut the tree design on this beautiful green acrylic and it only took about four minutes. Remove the paper masking on both sides and now it's time to personalize. I used my permanent adhesive vinyl and cut it with my Maker 3. Then weeded it and applied the transfer tape to adhere it to the acrylic tag. This project literally took 10 minutes and I love making craft projects with both my Glowforge and Cricut, so one doesn't get too jealous of the other. Are you loving this series so far? Come back tomorrow to see day 5 of Craftmas with Amy Makes That. Let's make a Christmas store map with your Cricut on day five of Craft Miss. This one is for my Swifties. First, open Cricut Design Space to make your design. The project link is on my blog post with the font and image I used. This is an 18 by 30 doormat, so I sized the design to 11 inches by 23 inches. Use the 12 by 24 standard grip mat to adhere the vinyl. We'll be using it as a stencil and painting our doormat, so you'll want to weed the words, not the background. And a tip I learned when making doormats is to use Glad Press and Seal instead of transfer tape. I know it's odd, but just trust me on this one. It is less stickier than transfer tape and you'll be thanking me. Remove the paper backing and then measure and move around your design to make sure it's straight. We do not want an uneven doormat. Then remove the press and seal to start painting. I used basic acrylic paint from Michaels, but I normally use a higher quality paint. You can learn more about that specific paint that I use in my colored doormat tutorial on YouTube. Then the secret sauce to making a doormat last is to use liquid flex seal. It's UV protected and makes your doormats last for literally a year. I'm not kidding. And then I'll take off the vinyl stencil to let it dry overnight. The next day, seal it with the clear liquid flex seal and your doormat is ready to be the perfect gift or your new home decor piece this holiday season. Comment if this tutorial helped you and follow me for day six of Craft Miss tomorrow. Who else remembers these Spotify album cool covers? I have a Christmas gift idea for you. For day six of Craft Miss, let's make a custom song name sweatshirt with the Spotify scannable code. You can make the entire design in Cricut Design Space. For the song line, take a square and minimize the height and extend the length. Then add a circle and place it anywhere on the line. Type out the song name and then the album name or artist name underneath. By the way, the top is bolded and the bottom is not. Add a heart shape on the side for the favorite button. Then take the circle, triangle, and square shapes to make the play button and fast forward rewind buttons. This entire 
entire project is basically shapes. Since this is a gift for personal use, I took the shuffle and repeat icons from Google. And then to get the Spotify code, you'll have to go find the song on Spotify, click share, then copy song link to insert it into spotifycodes.com. It'll then download to your device and you'll upload it into Cricut Design Space. Have your Cricut machine cut the iron on vinyl, don't forget to mirror, weed it, and then heat press onto the shirt. I added the Spotify code on the sleeve and thought it was the perfect spot to put it. What an easy DIY Christmas gift you can give someone this holiday season. Save this tutorial and come back to see Craft Miss Day 7's project tomorrow. Have you ever wanted to attempt making a glitter ornament with your Cricut? Let's make one for Craft Miss Day 7. Step one is to add polycrylic into your ornament. I got this mini resin syringe and it was such a big help. Make sure to move the ornament around and to get the entire inside evenly covered with the polycrylic. I used a red solo cup to let all of the excess drip out for about 15 minutes. Step two is to take your glitter and place it in a small cup like this so you can easily transfer it into the ornament. You guys voted for this beautiful gold glitter and yes, you will get it everywhere. Tilt the ornament until all of the glitter is covered on the inside and then flip it upside down again to get the excess out. The next day, I cut permanent vinyl with my Cricut Joy. The design was our last names and I added it to the ornament. A trick to apply vinyl to curved surfaces like this is to cut slits on the transfer tape so the vinyl can easily adhere better. All the materials are on my blog and I can't wait to see you make your own DIY glitter ornament. Join me for Craft Miss Day 8 tomorrow. Did you know that you can cut felt with your Cricut? Make a gingerbread house stocking tag for Craft Miss Day 8. I got these adorable gingerbread house SVGs which are on my blog and used the contour button to remove the top window and add our names. Since I have the maker, we're using the rotary blade to cut our felt gingerbread house and then using the fine point blade to cut the iron on vinyl for the snow, windows, and names. And of course, do not forget to mirror. Weed the HTV and then carefully align it on top of the felt. The Cricut mini press is so convenient for this project since it is a small project. I moved it back and forth on heat setting 2 to heat press and then removed the carrier sheet to reveal our final Christmas stocking tags. Have you heat pressed felt before? As always, all of the materials are on my blog. And come back tomorrow for Craftmas Day 9. This is your sign to get the Glowforge ore for Christmas because you can make decor like this for your home. It's day nine of Craftmas and we're making wood stocking tags. First, cut the gift tag on the light proof grade wood, then cut the name on the dark proof grade wood. I wanted to include this in because it was an easy fix, but since the font was on the thinner side, part of the name actually broke off. I promise we will fix it though. Remove the masking on both sides, then use wood glue to adhere it on the gift tag. I glued the A first and then the rest of my name and it looks like nothing happened. Nobody is going to know they're not going to know. Add twine or ribbon to lube it through your stocking and you just made a stocking tag from scratch just under eight minutes. Have I convinced you yet to get the Glowforge Aura? Join me for Craft Miss Day 10 tomorrow. I have these handwritten recipes from my grandma that I really want to turn into home decor, so let's heat press them onto tea towels for Craftmas Day 10. Step one is to take a photo of the recipe and remove the background. You can use a photo editor or your iPad to trace over the recipe. Step two, you need to upload the PNG image into Cricut Design Space and then size it to the tea towel. Step three, the Cricut will cut the HTV and do not forget to mirror. Then you will weed your design. If you want to skip the entire process of weeding, you can use a DTF transfer, which I do explain more about in my full tutorial on YouTube. And the final step is to heat press your design. I heat press at 310 degrees for 15 seconds. And as always, all of the materials I use are linked on my blog. If you're looking for the perfect holiday gift, you need to make these handwritten recipe tea towels because of how sentimental they are. Follow Amy Makes That to see Craft Miss Day 11's project tomorrow. Did you know you can etch glass with your Cricut? Learn how to make an etched baking dish for Craft Miss Day 11. The project link and image are on my blog, but you will use removable adhesive vinyl and mirror your design because this is going on the bottom of the baking dish. Weed the vinyl like a stencil, so weed the words because we'll be using Armor Etch and a paintbrush to heavily apply the etching cream to the dish. Don't be shy, apply a lot. Let it set for eight minutes, then wash it off in your sink and remove the vinyl stencil. Now this can be your favorite holiday baking dish. Come back to see Craft Miss Day 12 tomorrow. Keep watching if you want to learn how to really elevate Libby Cups for day 12 of Craftmas. First, try bedazzling your lids with rhinestones. Trust me, you won't be able to stop bedazzling everything once you learn how. All of the materials can be found on my blog, including the gems, glue, and helpful pen for easy application. Next, try adding a layer design onto your cups. The design is gingerbread themed, so the first layer is this light brown color, and then the outline white layer. Also, if you need a quick, easy way to layer your vinyl, watch my previous tutorial because this hack has saved me hours. Lastly, apply your vinyl onto your glass with this handy dandy cup assistant and your holiday Libby glass is ready for drinking because your drinks definitely taste more festive when they're in a decorated cup. Do you agree? Join me again for Craft Miss Day 13 tomorrow. 
Do you need Christmas party decor? Let's make DIY acrylic drink stirs for Craftmas Day 13. We're using my Glowforge Aura, Glowforge's proof grade acrylic, and these adorable stir SVGs that are linked on my blog. Each stir took about eight minutes to cut, but this project really is so easy because the Glowforge does all of the work for you. Once they're done cutting, remove the masking on both sides, and then you can impress your guests and add them to your drinks at your holiday party. I also made this yummy sugar cookie drink that I will link for you on the blog too. Are you enjoying my Craftmas series so far? Come back tomorrow for day 14 of Craft Miss. Who says friendship bracelets are just for concerts? Gift your loved ones personalized friendship bracelets this holiday season for Craftmas Day 14. All three of my sister-in-laws are mamas and I wanted to make them something special like these bracelets for Craftmas. Wow, I'm saying Craftmas too much. It's Christmas. There we go. I like to go on Pinterest to look up the pattern inspo, but you really can't go wrong with the different kind of patterns that you can make. I also triple knot these bracelets so they're strong and don't break. All of the beads and string I used are linked on my blog and comment below if you'll be making DIY my friendship bracelets this holiday season. Follow Amy Makes That to see Craft Miss Day 15 tomorrow. Turn this $3 dish into a jewelry holder for Craft Miss Day 15. I've always seen people mix acrylic paint and baking soda to get this beautiful ceramic finish and needless to say, it came out better than I thought it would. Make sure to work quick and get every inch of the dish covered so the finish is not uneven. I ended up painting about two coats. Then once it's fully dry, it's time to cut the design with your Cricut. I'm using my Joy and this gorgeous chrome vinyl to add an initial on the top of the ring dish. And this DIY gift costed me just under $10 talk about a steal. Comment if you'll be trying this Christmas gift idea and join me again tomorrow for Craftmas Day 16. Need an easy DIY gift for the holidays? Make a mug with infusible ink for Craftmas Day 16. Today we're using infusible ink sheets. Make sure to mirror your design. Then the Cricut Maker 3 will cut it and instead of using the weeder tool, you can just use your hands to pick up the excess background. Always clean your surface with alcohol. I have these alcohol wipes on hand and they're so easy to use and dispose for all my projects. Carefully place the design onto your mug you might have to redo it a few times to ensure that it's even and straight. Don't worry, it won't mess up the design. We're also using the mug press to press the design on. Funny enough, I actually had to watch one of my old YouTube videos to remember how to use it. When your mug is completely cooled, remove the carrier sheet to reveal your final design. I also made a mini bag of hot cocoa and marshmallows and tied it with this gorgeous velvet ribbon to complete the gifts. How cute. Come back tomorrow to see Craftmas Day 17's project. I found these patches at Hobby Lobby, so let's create a custom make a bag for Craftmas Day 17. These patches are actually adhesive, aka they have a sticky backing, so there's no need to involve your Cricut or heat press, which makes this gift so quick for you to make. They're also extremely durable and strong. I was trying to see if they'd lift at all, and they don't once they're pressed down. Save this DIY gift for later and follow Amy Makes That to see Craftmas Day 18 tomorrow. Why you need to stop procrastinating the hard projects with your Cricut. Yep, I was intimidated to cut faux leather with my Cricut, and it turned out to be the easiest part of this project. Everything else, however, went completely completely wrong, so let me show you what not to do for Craftmas Day 18. The project link is on my blog post, so you can literally make an exact copy of mine and not change a thing. We are cutting the faux leather with the deep point blade on the genuine leather setting and using the strong grip mat. Then we cut out the adhesive. This is how you attach the leather together and make it double-sided. I was going to use HTV, but you'll see why I don't later in the video. Mistake number one, I had the wrong keychain clasp. They make clasps with wider openings, so you don't have to squeeze it into the little small hoop, even though it worked out fine. Just really had to use my muscles on that one. Mistake number two, the faux leather was poor quality. I bought it from Amazon last minute and thought the HTV would press nicely, but nope, it actually disintegrated. So instead, I made a new keychain and used regular adhesive vinyl. Lastly, use the adhesive to attach the keychain together and voila, your project is ready to gift. Moral of the story, we all make mistakes. What matters is how we bounce back from them. Save this project for later and come back tomorrow for Craftmas Day 19. Get in the holiday spirit and bake your favorite recipe in a Christmas baking apron for Craftmas Day 19. The project link and materials are on my blog post and we're using the Cricut Joy Extra to cut our smart materials, which means you do not need to have a mat. Weed all of the HTV, then heat press each color one at a time. You can find out more details about the press time and temperature in my full tutorial on YouTube. So save this holiday project for later and come back tomorrow for Craftmas Day 20. This DIY gift is for the book lovers. Make a custom acrylic bookmark with your Cricut for Craftmas Day 20. Step one, remove the masking from the acrylic bookmark and apply adhesive to attach the beautiful gold foil flakes. How dreamy. The trick is to apply the adhesive where you want the foil flakes and the more scattered, the better. It doesn't need to be perfect. Step two, let the adhesive dry and paint over the foil flakes. Yes, you heard that right. You will paint on top of the flakes because the other side will have our design. Two coats did the trick for me and you can seal it once it's dry for extra protection. Step three, have the Cricut 
cut your design, I added names to mine in this beautiful script font and applied it with the adhesive vinyl and transfer tape. And finally, the last step is to add a ribbon to easily spot where your last page was. Will you be making this DIY gift for the holidays? We have five more days left of Craft Miss, so save this project for later and come back tomorrow for Craft Miss Day 21. Look at this easy gift idea. We're making this right now with my Cricut. I took a trip to the Dollar Tree and found the perfect jar, then bought this pack of holiday themed cardstock for the tack. I cut out all the cardstock with my Cricut Joy and then I'm using Cricut's adhesive foil for the label. Next, glue the gift tags together and apply adhesive foil to the tag. I added this little cutout of a bottle and added foam tape for some dimension. For the top of the jar, I cut out vinyl and thought it'd be funny to put open bar. And then finally, place all of your mini liquor bottles inside the jar, close the lid, and use twine to pull it through the gift tags to wrap it around your jar. What an easy DIY gift for the holidays. Save this and follow to see Craft Miss Day 22's project tomorrow. Let's make an easy Christmas tree envelope with our Cricut for Craftmas Day 22. The template and cardstock can be found on my blog post. Make sure one layer is a score and the other is a basic cut. Insert your scoring pen into your Cricut clamp A and attach your cardstock to the light grip mat. The Cricut will then score first, then cut the envelope with the fine point blade. I use the heavy cardstock setting and it cuts perfect every time. Fold each area that was scored. I like to use my extra large scraper tool to help. Then fold in the Christmas tree. Now you can assemble the envelope. Push forward the Christmas tree so it peeks out of the envelope and you're all done. This is such a festive way to gift holiday cards. Will you be trying this project? Come back tomorrow for day 23 of Craftmas. If you need a gift for that special someone in your life, try making this DIY Christmas coupon book for Craftmas Day 23. Today, we're using the Cricut Joy Extra and my festive cardstock to make a little book of date ideas for the new year. Cricut Design Space makes it so easy to customize with their templates, so the Cricut will cut out the cardstock and adhesive foil, and then all you'll have to do is weed the dates and titles so you can apply to each ticket. I feel like every couple struggles with finding new and exciting dates to do, so this is a really thoughtful creative gift you both can enjoy. Then add twine to keep all the coupons together and rip them off as you go on each date. Thank you to Cricut's scoring pen. There are two more days left of Craft Miss, so be sure to follow me and share if you'll be making today's project. Stop scrolling to make a gift card holder with your Cricut because no one likes a naked gift card. The template is from Cricut Design Space. Be sure to measure your gift card before cutting to ensure that it fits. I'm using regular cardstock and this gorgeous glitter cardstock and attaching them together with glue. To add some dimension, I also used foam stickers for the top ribbon. Finally, insert your gift card and now you have a holder for your gift card that you just made in under five minutes. We love an easy Cricut project. Save this for later and come back tomorrow to see the final Craft Miss project. You need to label your gifts, so why not make your own with your Cricut for Craft Miss Day 25? Today, we're using the Cricut Joy Extra to print, then cut these adorable Christmas gift tags. This is also your friendly reminder to calibrate your Cricut machine before doing print then cut projects for an accurate cut. I used my printer to print the tags on Cricut's printable sticker paper, and I was so impressed with the quality and perfect cut. You can find all the materials and project link on my blog, and be sure to catch up on the entire Craft Miss series on all of my socials and website at amymakesthat.com. And don't forget to comment which which project was your favorite? Happy holidays and happy crafting!